<laughs> Welcome back. Another day, another vlog. <sighs> Missed Friday, as we said, discussed. Um, heap busy, super mega busy weekend. Three different houses Saturday, massive early drive in the morning, all the way to Brisbane to back to look at houses and a lot happening. Um, yeah, I thought I'd try something different this morning anyway. So I've got the RP with the Sigma 18 to 35 lens on. On video now, I think it only does 1080p. It doesn't do 4K like the M50 does. Um, me original, but um, I don't really use 4K because I just can't store it anyway. Um, even when I'm doing my daily vlogs, which I delete uh, pretty much most of the time, I don't use 4K as much anyway. So I'm going back to work next week. I have to limit my luggage because now I'm traveling across the country and then I've got to travel up to work. I need to take as less gear as possible. So I'm probably thinking about leaving the M50 behind. Um, yeah, some thoughts on that. I'm sort of thinking down the track, maybe around September, I'm gonna look at offloading the M50 and all my lenses, my whole M50 range. Um, and then even maybe the RP and then upgrading to an R6 or an R5 if I can afford it. If, now that they're sort of coming second hand, there's a heap on the second hand market. I'm hopeful I can maybe sell this a few fair few lenses and then upgrading to an R5 and then down the track maybe get a nice 15 to 35 lens or something. I'm, they're mega bucks. I'm, they're, the lenses don't seem to drop. Obviously, they don't drop as fast. So, body wise, I think I can just about go over to the RP. If I'm only going to do HD, which I'm doing anyway, and most of my video stuff when I'm doing my videos is on the iPhone. So, that's 4K. So, I've got that covered anyway. So, I think we might be looking at retiring my beautiful little M50. Um, it has been a gem the whole way through. Uh, it's got that lovely alpha skin on there, the red mamba. My 16 mil Sigma is going to be the one I'm going to miss, especially for video. It's a brilliant lens at 16 mil, so that's yeah. But I need to. I just need to trim the stuff that I'm. I've got in my bags. I just can't take two cameras or and lenses to suit everything. Um, when I'm realistically only using this for my day-to-day uh, -day videos, so see how we go. Anyway. Um, other than that, still working on the photos, still working on the current video. So that hasn't got, uh, obviously the weekend was a total white write off. Uh, didn't do anything. Uh, I've been just doing life stuff, family and life stuff. So that's all good. Back to work today. Uh, I've got a fair bit I've got to get sorted. Had to sort out some other life issues as well. Um, car is in getting a new head deck, which is super stoked. Just got a little Sony one, but it's got Apple CarPlay, so these long drives I'm doing, now I can actually now sync the phone. It's a 2004 Touareg. It had a CD player and radio. That was my option with no USB port anywhere in the car, only 12 volt, which didn't work. So um, yeah, I knew none of the, all of the stuff wasn't gonna work and it was old, that's why I got it, but I got that awesome engine. Uh, it went in for a service and they come back with a clean bill of health. So that was super good for me. Uh, Took a load off my mind thinking I might have got, you don't know if you've bought a lemon until I guess you get it checked out and sussed out. I've got no tools to pull anything and check it. So now I can uh, look at down the track doing some stuff with that. It's great that I'm gonna have an actual head that I can use. So pretty cool and excited about that. Also what else come for the Touareg? Um, obviously 16, 17 years old nearly. Um, oh yeah, 17 years old. Uh, Floor mats. I bought some floor mats from diamondcarmats.com. I think it's like 330 bucks uh, with freight. I think three about 300 to 400 bucks. Uh, full leather, waterproof. Uh, they even say fireproof. I'm not sure how fireproof they are, but like full leather and they fit up around the walls. Molds in awesome. Uh, and that's a tailgate as well. I think that was a little bit, that might have been a bit extra. So it's about 400 bucks delivered. Uh, super stoked with the quality, uh, very, very happy. So I'll put a link down below. If you're looking for a car and you're looking for some floor mats and you don't want to just get standard rubber mats or whatever, these are waterproof so you can get them dirty or whatever. Uh, down the track you can throw them away, but it, it seals up. Normally your floor mats get to the edge and then the dirt goes over the side and gets underneath the floor mat and you can pull it all out and vacuum it anyway. 
uh, this gives you like a fully molded set. And uh, yeah, I thought they hadn't arrived, but um, they had arrived. I just didn't know about it. We'd sort of had some parcels and they'd sort of got lost in the cupboard. <laughs> So yeah, super stoked about that. They look fantastic. They're in the car, so the car looks a million bucks. Um, once you get this head deck in, I'm sort of pretty much good to go. Now I've got to find some way to store that spare wheel. Um, I'm looking at some options for that at the moment. So looking pretty cool. So that's what's been happening with me. Hope uh, hope you've had a good weekend, wherever you're, wherever you're coming from, uh, over the podcast. I've got another dedicated listener there, so that's always cool. Um, all around, we've had a bit of news, so we're going to get straight, well, not straight in, we're going to get into it now. Let's do it. Now, um, rumours on Twitter on the week, on Friday, were that uh, AirPods 3, that's the new version of AirPods, um, dropping to, well, on the 18th, which would probably be either midnight for us or the 19th, realistically. So it'll be maybe Tuesday, I reckon, we should have some update on that. So AirPods 3 and a new Apple Music, a Plus version, which will be, there's sort of been some debate on it, whether it's going to, what's it, what the Plus is, because we've already got Apple Music, which you pay, which I pay for now, and I can get unlimited songs and all that. The biggest problem with that is uh, if you go and save it to a list and make a list, uh, like a playlist, if you ever stop paying for it, you lose all those songs and you don't have any music. So you're really, really paying for something that you never keep. So that's, it's like renting a house and never owning a house. Uh, if you ever move or you, everything you've ever done for that house is gone. So that's the only problem I have with it. So I'm sort of thinking about getting back out of that and just buying songs, at least then I own them and they're always there and I've always got them. So, but Apple Music Plus, they're thinking it's a hi-fi version. So a better version. I'm not sure what else is in that. There was, it was, there's been some conjecture, but nothing sort of airtight sort of locked in someone knows exactly what it is but we've seen all the rumors for Air, airpods 3 um it's probably going to the airpods pro are going to change shape and form we've talked about that in the past on previous shows but this air, air latest iteration of the airpods 3 which should get all the pro stuff into the base model for the same price re, should be releasing in the next couple of days so that's pretty exciting that'll be good to see and we'll obviously once they once it happens i'll give you some more info on cost details and specs so not far off for that i said uh yeah big shout out to darren and car mates the two reg now looks a million bucks i went the black with red stitching diamond stitching obviously hence the name diamond car mats it does look very sort of luxury car so if you want to give your car a bit of a lift go check them out um yeah definitely worthwhile uh, very very cool very happy with my purchase there that was a good value add to the car i think now, uh, Volleyback, if you haven't heard of Volleyback, that's V-O-L-L-E-B-A-K.com. Go check them. They do some funky stuff, things like uh, the 100-year hoodie, 100-year um, joggers, pants. They've now released 100-year uh, uh, shorts. They've got carbon fiber T-shirts, all this crazy stuff, a full copper jacket, a jacket woven out of wove, a weavable copper. copper. Uh, they do some funky stuff. Now, the premise behind a 100-year jumper pants and these new shorts are obviously they last 100 years. Now, these shorts that have just released, which I thought are pretty good, probably more preferable for Australia because we wear shorts 99% of the year. Even when it's in winter, I wear shorts. Um, they are set to last 100 years. They've built in, uh, I think it's carbon fiber and not, uh, all this other stuff. Basically, they're fireproof, waterproof. Uh, the water will just run off them. They've got all nice pockets and everything. Fully abrasion res resistant. I have to get a, they rub something over and they're testing 100,000 times and none of the strands broke on it. That's sort of how they can guarantee it's 100 years. Um, and fireproof, what it does is got a fire retardant layer in there. So if fire's near it, it expands out so you can't get burnt. So. I guess it's what they use, I guess, with the firefighting jackets. That same tech and NASA tech goes into the the shirts and the, the jump, the hoodie, the pants and the joggers, which are or track, track pants, which are coming out soon. I think you still can get a hoodie. You can still order it. They're not cheap. So the shorts are 345 bucks. There's three colors. Uh, there's a navy, a khaki and a gray. So pretty standard colors they'll go with anything for us blokes 
um, if you want to be some a bit of a talking point, or if you're in one of those industries where you're just sort of, or in an area where you're close to fire or, or you're hiking, I think that'd be great hiking shorts for the wear resistance. So you can just go through and no dramas. Uh, go check these out. I said 345 US dollars. So you're looking at nearly 500 bucks Australian for a pair of shorts. Uh, definitely not cheap, but guaranteed to last 100 years. Whether Volleyback's going to be around for 100 years to give you a warranty, <laughs> who knows? But look, it's a great premise to do it on. Obviously, it's got stainless steel buttons and zips and all the fun stuff. Uh, yeah, go check these out. Pretty cool. Uh, they've got a whole range in this 100-year range now. Um, it's, it's something different and something outside the ordinary. Things built to last, like the old days, uh, not just wear it for a season, throw it in the bin. That's the premise on these. Now, Canon's uh, well, set to announce later in the year some interest. We talked about them at that show in the NAB show in October. Well, Canon rumors are saying they, these got, they've got cine lenses for the RF range to come out, as well as the C300S and the 500S. The focal lengths for those cine lenses uh, for use budding filmologists. Uh, 14mm 1.5 and 18mm 1.5, 24mm 1.3, 35mm 1.3, 50mm 1.3, 85 1.3, 100 1.5, and 135mm 1.5. Look, they're going to be fantastic lenses. Um, they're cinema, so they're not going to be cheap. Oh my goodness, it'd be probably 20, 30 grand for a set, uh, but uh, to fit natively to RF mount. Uh, that's going to be pretty cool for these guys doing video, full-time video. Check them out. They'll, they, that should be released in October. There's going to be a ton of stuff released later in the year for uh, Canon. It's going to be a monster year. They're planning on really just, just dumping a heap of brand new stuff on everyone in that second half. And I think it's going to, they really want to put the heat back on Sony and that thing is good. Now, the interesting tidbit in this uh, discussion about those lenses what Canon Room is always also saying, two compact zooms and two larger zooms at the same time. Some compact zooms, some wide angles, say like a 15 to 35 RF, but a cheaper version, something like the, my 24 to 105 that I use with the RP, uh, that would be pretty cool. Um, and even some larger zooms that are more affordable, not those L series, $3,000, $4,000 beasts that literally us as beginners and entry guys can't afford to get in. So that would be pretty cool. On top of that, even more uh, crazy stuff. Uh, Peyton was found for a 1200 uh, mirror lens. So mirror style, so it's not like your normal lens. So you've probably seen them, they're the big round suckers with a, like a plate in the middle. So it sort of bounces forward and back. So it keeps it short and compact instead of ridiculously long. Um, there's a 1200 mil F8 patent out there in the wind. Uh, they have done them previously. They are a long time ago, Canon. Did, a, I think, three different lenses. Um, a 500 uh, or 2500 or something like that. So there was a few done before. They're now worth a mint. I'm saying like $50,000 a piece, sort of crazy stuff. So there's a rumor of this 1200 coming. There's a patent there for it. Uh, again, that might be something that may come in that October. We do know Canon is going to release a shit ton of new glass this year and some bodies to suit. So crazy, crazy stuff getting around in the Canon world. There's a lot, a lot of talk and conjecture about what's coming. Um, it's probably going to be second half before we actually get to see actually what they announce. They, they tend to be... Uh, very Apple-ish in there, the way that they announce it, where Sony just goes, uh, here it is, and you can buy it tomorrow. <laughs> we don't get that with Canon. They dribs and drabs us. They like that constant talk. So anyway, we'll see what happens. But some good fun stuff. I'm excited about a compact zoom that's affordable for entry-level R mount uh, users. That would be super for me. Uh, something I can have to go, to, say, a 15 to 35 or even a 15 to 24 or something, 12 to 24, that I, that would then complement my 24 to 105. That would be perfect. And then say maybe then a 105 to 300 would be better to have that sort of budget trinity of lenses. That would be cool. So fingers crossed. 
they they are going to bring us some budget stuff this year with all the premium stuff they've already announced. Now, also uh, Vanderhall, if you haven't heard of them, they make a like a little three wheeled car. It's it's basically motorcycle class. Um, little little beast looks pretty darn cool. They are getting into electric, like everyone else in the world. It's all going electric. 2022, they're going to be releasing the Navarro. You would have seen it on the thumbnail. It looks like a June buggy. Well, it's a fully electric June buggy, uh, and it's pretty darn uh, good. Um, no prices as yet that I can see, but I got a few specs. Uh, 300 horsepower, 500 foot-pound of torque, so plenty of grunt. 200 miles or 320 k's of range. So for something you can't drive, you can't drive it on the road. Or I'm pretty sure that, um, but you can drive it on the beaches and around your property or hunting or anything like that. Electric, really good if you are hunting, nice and silent. You can creep up on whatever you're hunting or doing if if that's your your thing. Um, so pretty cool for individual motors. 35 inch tires on 18 inch wheels, carbon fiber brakes and ABS, they're wet style brake, full climate control. So it's got air con and everything, a, a lid on it. You can remove the lid uh, if you want and have it open. If you are, I guess if you're hunting, you can probably sneak through and shoot or bow and arrow or whatever you're doing. So it does have a lot of uses, potential uses this sucker. VIDAR, something like LIDAR, so you're gonna have some things to see around your video maybe see your cameras and so you see your surroundings to get through four wheel drive tracks. 20 inch suspension travel, so that's pretty cool. It's, it's very June buggy, so it's definitely gonna be good for off-road. Um, regen brakes, four wheel steering, uh, four seater, so that's four adults, uh, 300 volt architecture. Um, and the what I thought was also interesting, motor, inverter, the gearbox, um, and the gear train, sorry, all in one piece. So it's basically, you pull the motor and everything out Replace it with new one, you basically get the whole system, and then it's just wires down to your individual motors. So this really compact, uh, easy to repair design, or one piece, pull that out, put on a bench, repair everything out of service. Now they're saying um, the zero maintenance for 10 years. Now electric battery does sound about right. I'd say a lot of that's gonna be replacing your battery pack. Um, so pretty cool. Now with that 300 volts, you can charge it to 80%, DC charge at 80% in one hour. Uh, it's got a 60 kilowatt energy storage and it's got NMC pouch cell. So a different type of battery as well, so a little bit different. And it's got an onboard six kilowatt charges just for charging normally. So if you do do a DC charge, you can, it's obviously the best one hour, 80%. That's gonna get you another 100 odd miles of range. That's pretty darn cool, uh, should be fun. Speaking of electric, we've got some more on electric. The Tesla S played over watching late eclipse, Lou late eclipse. Um, on the Jay Leno show, they must be doing a show on it. Uh, some photos were caught by one of the electric crowd. Um, apparently, it's broke the, well, it's for a production car, it's broke the speed record for quarter mile, a 9.23 second quarter mile at 152 miles an hour. There's only one car above it, and it's a uh, a hypercar, so not a production car. Uh, pretty crazy. Uh, also, they were saying, they talked about in the, in the, uh, the chat that Jay Leno had a couple of passengers in it and pulled a 9.5 seconds, so sub 10 seconds out of a car, electric car, that's pretty darn crazy. That's awesome. Now, that's to put in this perspective, the $2 million US Chiron, Bugatti Chiron, uh, this now the plate is faster than that, so really bang for bucks. If direct speed wise, if that's your thing, uh, this Tesla plate's looking pretty much the goods. Very very cool. Um, yeah, as I said, they am pretty sure it's going to be locked in as the production car fastest quarter mile on the planet is now the Tesla S plate. So good, some good news for Tesla in that regard. It's always a good selling point as well. Now. F-150, we talked about it last week, the F-150 Lightning, the release is on the 20th here in Australia. It's in the, if you're in the Eastern States, 11.30 a.m. They'll have the Ford is doing the YouTube release on it, an announcement. Uh, I'll have more on that as that releases, but pretty excited. That's gonna be a big one for all electric vehicles. As much as Tesla is fantastic, the F-150 is the biggest selling model 
vehicle on the planet. If that succeeds, then that's gonna change electric cars. That's gonna be, whenever you change technology, you need either a government or you need something to buy mass on mass to get that technology to cheap, make it cheaper. When solar power first came out, it was ridiculously overpriced because now everyone's doing it and it's, it's more viable. It's now becoming cheaper and cost effective. This F-150 has the ability, I think, to change, to push, to kick it over the line and say, right, our electric cars are here, this thing works. We're selling 30, 50,000 of these a month. That's, that's gonna be enough to push them through and then you get the secondhand electric car market going through the roof when they sell every couple of years. It has that ability. And I think it's gonna be big, so that we'll definitely do a full report on that and how it goes. And that's about it. Um, yeah, happy Monday. Thanks for coming by. If you haven't already subscribed, um, yeah, hit that button, hook us up. If you haven't seen all the new merch, go check that out. Remember I updated that last week. There's some new bits and pieces on there. Some new, uh, all sorts of bits and fun stuff to get you through your winter, your summer, or whatever season you're in, wherever you are. Thanks again for stopping by. So if you're coming this way, that way, I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.